Now we're starting module two with customer focus. Now this is central, customer focus. All worthwhile growth must be centered on the customer. And here we use customer also to mean stakeholders. So it's just very uh, broad term that we use. Consumer sovereignty, that's a term we learned in economics, but it's very important. At the end of the day, you must meet the market, delight the market, and remember the design steps, right? Compelling insights, compelling value to the customer, making sure they provide compelling equity to us, the firm, the organization, and a power offer design. So let's focus first, however, on the non-customers. That might be a bit odd, but it's important because it's these are people who are potentially a, a great big open blue ocean that we can explore. People who are not connected to us yet, or not yet anyway. We'll look at methods of discovery and humility. It's important to maintain humility. We will look at that a bit later. So the two main engines were design and execution, as we said. So we must aim for compelling outcomes, always high levels, deep interests. Be open to different realities. There's not just one reality. This might be a bit difficult for an engineer or a scientist to think about because you know, a rock is a rock. But human beings, we're all individuals and we have different experiences. And what we know is our reality. For example, my reality might not be shared by everybody else. Think about BMW. You know, they were the first to include the iPod. This is from compelling insights into the type of people that they wanted to attract. And then the ultimate driving machine. Oh, isn't that lovely? That's compelling value for the customers. And of course, the customers who buy, drive BMWs, provide compelling equity to the firm relative, for example, to the customers of Ford or General Motors. This is an ongoing effort. It must be kept up. For example, in 2019, they upgraded the mobile site. Just again. Now, when we're looking at execution, the first draft is really the perfect copy. It's useful here to bring staff and stakeholders into providing early input into how we bring our design to market. And that helps us to provide context for continuous improvement. Think of Apple. Yeah, everybody loves Apple. Well, the customers do. It's been reborn several times by the iMac, the iPod, the iPhone. It's an ongoing improvement. And they provide vibrant satisfaction for their customers. Their types of customers like innovation. And so therefore, they're naturally difficult to retain. They have to work hard for that. So if you ask an Apple customer, you will often hear that there is vibrant engagement. They're strong advocates for the product and the service before sales and after sales service. The repeat customer is strong, certainly vibrant retention there. <laughs> On one occasion when I asked a student why, why you got Apple? There was the only person in the whole class. And the response was, just look at it. It's beautiful. I love it. It does everything I want. It's easy to operate. We must remain externally focused. Cooperative with customers, stakeholders. Interactive listening. And perhaps sometimes also educating, teaching them, showing them how to use the products. Iterative, ongoing improvement. There are some design thinking elements to this approach. And understand that we're offering functional and emotional components, not just a functional physical product. You can look up the BMW advertising campaigns and you'll see how they have evolved over time. Now, we don't always understand where to find these value originating ideas, value creation, partly because core capabilities can become core rigidities. What we're really good at we keep on doing, the market's moved on, but we necessarily don't go with them. So the sources of success become entrenched, the culture becomes entrenched and self-perpetuating. 
we place more attention to experience over experimentation. Maybe at the beginning, how we came to the innovations to be uh, at the head of the game was through some experiments and some novel approaches, but then that becomes forgotten and it's harder to maintain in a successful organisation. As I said, the culture remains reinforced. There's no questioning. It becomes dangerous to challenge the orthodoxy. Now, I said before, it's important to have humility. Sometimes it's not easy to hear what people tell us. They might not like our product, they might not like our service. Someone else's is better. Important to listen, listen and learn. Humility.